Hi everyone. Today I will be talking about the four step formula for maths, reasoning and English. So I have created a four step formula with which you can easily cover maths, English and reasoning from the very basics. You can skip some of these steps if you've already covered them before, but I would recommend that if you're starting from scratch, then you cover all these four steps one by one without skipping any of them. Let us start with step one. Uh, before starting with step one, I would like to specify that this four step formula is going to be useful for our, uh, IBPS, for SBI, for uh, RBI, for SEBI, for NABARD and various other examinations in which you have quant reasoning and English. It doesn't matter what the level of the examination is the formula stays the same, the steps stays the same. Okay, so let us start with this with step one. Your first step when you're starting with any topic of either maths or reasoning or English is to cover topic wise concepts. Your focus here has to be on concepts on formulas in case of maths. Please do not jump towards short tricks. What short tricks do if you jump to them is that they affect your conceptual clarity and you don't want that to happen because short tricks can never be universal in nature. They are shortcuts and shortcuts do not provide or confirm success. Therefore, at this stage, you have to go through the long route by focusing on the concepts only. For example, you are covering time speed at distance. So all the formulas connected with time, speed and distance, all the concepts connected with time, speed and distance, they should be very, very crystal clear in your mind. In this step, you will be doing one more thing and that is topic wise practice questions. So for example, if I'm done or when I'm done with the conceptual clarity on time, speed, distance, I will pick up probably 10, 10, 15, 20, 30, 50, whatever is comfortable for me practice questions. Remember, you do not have to use any timer at this stage. If you start using timer, you are pressurizing yourself even when your conceptual clarity is at a very rudimentary, very basic level. So please do not use a timer. Let's come to step two. In step two, you are covering practice questions of multiple topics together. So in step one, you're already done with, let's say, all the topics of quant or let's say 10 topics of quant and now you want to jump to step two and identify how much do you remember in these 10 topics basically revise them so now you come to step two wherein you take up these multiple topics together you create a test for yourself by identifying practice questions and then you start doing those questions for example i will take up five questions from time speed distance I will take up five random questions from profit and loss. I will take up five random questions from ratio and proportion. I will take up, let's say, five random questions from CISI. So what have I done here? I have created a test of 20 questions, five questions each from these four topics. Now I'm going to solve these 20 questions and see whether I'm able to recall the topics that I covered first or that I covered probably 10 days back or not. There are two, multiple, uh, two further divisions in this step. Number one is solving these questions without a timer. So you first do not use any timer. So whatever timer you have, let's say this is a clock. So you do not use a timer when you start with this, but eventually you can use a timer, okay? Now, there are multiple steps in timer usage as well. If you directly jump onto a very big timer like 30 minutes, you are going to hurt yourself because you've not yet increased your concentration span and you're jumping to a 30 minute timer. So what is the right approach? You take a 10 minute timer and you take, let's say, 10 questions. These 10 questions can be from one subject, one topic. These 10 questions can be from multiple topics. It's completely up to you. I would recommend taking multiple topics because now you're already in step two. 
So you start with timer number one of 10 minutes. You do it for two, three days or three, four times in a single day. And then you increase your time. You jump onto a 15 minute timer. Similarly, when you start feeling comfortable in this, you jump to a 20 minute timer, 20 questions. Then you jump to a 30 minute timer, 30 questions. Eventually, you should be jumping towards or going towards a 45 minute timer with 45 questions. It doesn't matter what examination you're preparing for. What this does is it prepares you for the maximum concentration span that is going to be required from you. Okay. So, for example, in RBI grade B, you require 25 minutes of concentration span in quant, but you, you've already practiced the 45 minute spanner. So, now, you know, attempting all the questions in 25 minutes in quant is going to be super easy for you. Similarly, you will have 25 minutes for English. It is going to be very easy because you've already prepared 45 minutes concentration span or timer for English as well. In reasoning, the maximum time is much higher at 45 minutes. Now, because you've already prepared 45 minutes worth of timer, you can easily take it up. You can also increase it to 60 for reasoning specifically if you want to. But I would recommend that take it up to 45 minutes for for every type of question, for every type of subject, so that you're prepared for the maximum level and you don't feel lack of concentra concentration in the final examination. I hope this is clear. Let's come to step three now. Now in step three, you're going to cover entire maths, not only these four topics or five topics or 10 topics, entire maths, or I'm putting or here, entire reasoning or entire English practice questions with a timer. This timer is going to be in sync with your examination. Okay. So let's say you are again preparing for RBA grade B. So what is going to happen? 25 minute, you put a 25 minute timer for quant, you take up 30 questions and you practice them. Similarly, you put a 45 minute timer for reasoning, you take up 60 questions and you practice them. You put a 25 minute timer for English, you take up 30 questions and you practice them. This will enable you to experience how, how are you going to feel in the final examination. But here, again, because it is step three and not the final step, you are taking only one subject at a time. Once you have mastered this, once you feel more comfortable with it, then you jump on to step four. Okay. In this step, you are going to take a comprehensive mock of all the three. Remember, I'm not including GA computers here. Those can be added later. That will be another step if you want to add those. But at this step, because we are dealing with only quant reasoning, maths, English and reasoning. Therefore, I would want to focus on this only. So you create a mock which has only maths, reasoning or English. Or if there is a mock with four subjects or five subjects, you eliminate these or remove these do not consider them and with a timer you practice these mocks okay the objective here is to get used to writing a complete mock as it is going to happen in the examination you can anytime add ga or computer awareness or any other subject later on that is not going to be a very major issue the issue arises with your concentration with your practice in quant reasoning and english and that is where these four steps come in very, very handy. I hope this video was useful. I hope you are going to use these four steps if you are preparing for any of these examinations or any other examination which uses quant reasoning or or and English. All the best guys. This was Anujindal. Take care. Bye-bye. Jai Hind.